Hi everyone, I'm Jane from the Business of Food and welcome to our series that we haven't really named yet and um, I thought uh, we might pull together some of the experts that we have access to and last week you were um, treated to Karen Redford of Retail Feed talking about um, how to engage retailers for your new food product and how to work some tips and hints about how to work in this weird and wonderful new order. And I think um, this week you'll get just as much information out of our second speaker, who is Lee Bitterovsky from Lee Bird Photography. Hi, Lee. Hi. Thank you for the lovely introduction. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Not a problem. Thank you for being part of our network. We really um, understand that you guys are the core of, um, you know, what we do and basically sending our clients to you for things that we know they'll need is a real luxury for me in particular. So thank you. And thank you, vice versa. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> um, do you want to start by describing what it is you do, how you started Leebird and um, basically why you do this? Yeah, so I'm... Um, I am a food and product photographer and I also do personal branding, but my passion is food, obviously. And um, I've been doing food photography for about six years. Prior to that, I was um, doing family and newborns and I, food has always been my passion and it was always a dream of mine to be a food photographer. And it was basically, I got to the point where I was just like, well, it's now or never. Um, I just need to move over, move on over. And an opportunity came up um, and I just took it and went with it. So um, basically my business has evolved from then. Um, and uh, I didn't start off my career as a photographer. I started off as a journalist, um, but it's sort of always had that underlying photography element. So it's always been part of my life and yeah amazed and excited and happy to be at this point in my life. Right. Um, why do I do it? I, well, A, I love it. So I'm really lucky that um, what started off as a hobby has turned into a, a business and has become a livelihood and that I still love it every day, I wake up and, it, and I'm excited about doing what I do, coming up with new ideas for clients and helping people achieve their dreams as well. So. Mm. You have a very interesting background and um, I imagine journalism had, you know, a lot of connection with photography as well because I know every time we've done a story in the media, there's always been a photographer that they've sent out with the journalist. Um, but how, how did you get into newborns? And I imagine that was actually quite a lot easier to find clients than it is for your food photography. So, yeah, I basically, when my daughter was born, I had a newborn shoot um, and the girl who had done the shoot was, had been a lawyer and she had changed her career. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, you can change your career. You don't have to be stuck in doing the same thing forever. Um, at that point, I wasn't in journalism anymore. And I think I was a little bit disillusioned with where I was at. Um, and I started taking photos of Mia and it's kind of just evolved from there. I was taking photos, posting them on Facebook and people were like, oh, can you do photos like that for me? So it was just sort of a natural evolution where I started yeah. doing photos for people on the weekend. Um, and I was using this photographer that I had used for Mia's new yeah. photos um, as inspiration basically as a role model. Um, and then I was on, like learning and on forums and I found a mentor and she was a newborn photographer and she basically mentored me into becoming a newborn and family photographer, which I loved. And yes, it was really easy to get clients but by the same token. It kind of exploded where everyone with a camera became a photographer. Mm. So there was a lot of competition and people were charging and undercutting, charging really little and undercutting. So I was finding it really difficult to actually make any money. Um, yeah. It. So yeah. I suppose that was part of my decision to sort of move into corporate as well. Um, I was like, well, you know, at least it's something that a I don't have to do on weekends only, um, so I can actually see my kids, <laughs> and b um, that would actually would pay me 
that was another option. So yeah, it was a kind of like, there was a few things plus was my passion and I'd always wanted to do it. So there are a few mm. factors mm. that got me, got me where I am today. Okay. It's interesting that, you know, a lot of us have got um, previous lives and, and I think it all leads you to a point where um, sometimes you're, your passion and your job actually becomes one and the same thing, which is an amazing um, place to be. Um, but you mentioned that in the newborn um, sector, there were a lot of people that started doing things, uh, sorry, taking photos um, themselves. And I suspect that you found a lot of that in food photography as well. Correct. So it's, um, you know, with the advent of mobile phones as well and how good, you know, well our phones can take photos, yeah. um, a lot of people with phones have just started taking their own photos and that does impact on the food photography, but by the same token, you're never going to achieve the same result. Um, and so I guess that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Yes, you can definitely take photos on your phone and you can really take amazing photos on your phone. <laughs> But um, there will come a time where you will still need professional photographer, uh, yeah. photography um, and it will just sort of elevate your brand to the next level. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to give tips and provide tips so that you can do the photos on your own, but mm. also you know, just bearing in mind that at some point you probably will need to elevate your photos just that little bit more. Yeah, and you did mention in our phone call earlier that um, you had done some uh, before and after kind of um, exercises with some of your clients. How did that go? I have a client uh, called Tony's Pies in Essendon. Um, they've primarily been a walk-in business to this point. They sell pies, obviously, and quiches and also other baked goods, donuts and uh, apple pies and um, all sorts of biscuits and things. Mm. Um, so they basically came to me and asked, because of the current situation, they're going to be uh, supplying their product through a third party service provider um, and asked me to take some really beautiful photos so that they can really showcase their product in the best light. Um, and they have got a social media presence already. Um, and they've always just used their phone. And when you look at the photos that I've taken versus the photos that they've taken, there's such a huge discrepancy in the, not necessarily the quality, but the way the photo talks to you and the way it's styled. And whereas they might have just had a slice of pie with some carrots next to it, I've really made it look more appealing. So, you know, yes, you can definitely take your photos and there is, there are times where you'll need to. Um, but yeah, so in that situation, they'll be putting those photos on the third party provider and hopefully on their own websites. Um, yeah. And then that'll, that'll help them sell their pies. Better, basically, hopefully. Of course. Well, obviously I've seen um, some of the examples that you put up in your investigation of that. And uh, you used a lemon meringue pie, if I'm not mistaken, because that looked amazingly good and you just wanted to dive into it and kind of devour it in one sitting. So if, if the original photos are not like that, then you're actually not getting, you know, the impact, making the impact that you, that you expect to be making, I'm sure. Exactly, exactly. Um, and, and basically people eat with their eyes, especially yeah. now. Um, you know, everyone's online. Everyone is looking at the food on Instagram, on Facebook, on the website. Um, they're not smelling the food. They're not getting that, you know, all the senses involved. So you really have to make it as appealing as possible. So, okay. yeah. yeah. And, and I believe that's the blog that you've recently written because um, I must admit I haven't read it, but I have heard about it. And um, I think it was more about how you take those kind of photos, right? Correct. So I was basically um, giving people a few tips. Uh, as I said, everyone's got really good cameras on their phones now. Um, and you can actually take some really nice photos with your phone. So I was mm -hmm. basically giving people tips for those occasions when they can't get a photographer mm -hmm. to take the photos on their own. So um, would you like me to talk you some through some of those tips? 
Yeah, just give us a couple of those tips so that, you know, we can start working on it and maybe let us know where we can find that blog. Okay, so the blog is available um, at leebirdphotography.com.au forward slash blog. <laughs> I'll give you the proper link. Um, and I think I'll give you my favourite tip. Let me just stick to one favourite tip, aside from what you'll read on the blog, which is lighting and that kind of thing. But if you look at your camera right now, so if you open up your camera, um, when you're looking at the screen, you can press on any bit of the screen and lock that exposure in, lock that focus in. So say I want uh, something in the foreground to be in focus, I will, I will um, click on that and it'll actually lock the focus so that if I move the camera, that particular part will definitely stay in focus. And also by clicking on that thing that some on some screens, like a little sun symbol will come up and you can drag that up or down to increase or decrease the exposure of the, um, of the image. So that's, you know, that's already like, you know, a bit of your editing done in, in camera that you can. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. So there's Thank just you. a few little tips that you can use on your camera, on your phone camera. Um, yep. But yeah, definitely head to the blog, blog for a few other really essential. I think, I think they're very essential tips. Right. Okay. And it works on iPhone and Android, right? Yes. Because I have an Android and I'm pretty sure you have an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. I've got an Android. Okay. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it works on iPhone too, though. Does it work on iPhone, Claire? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> it does. Awesome. So that, yeah, you can do it on iPhone or Android. Some cameras have different capabilities. I have a, um, I don't even know how to say it, a Huawei. Huawei yeah. phone and in my um, in my app I can actually go into pro mode and right. really right. fine-tune my images as much as I really want to whereas not all cameras would have that but most cameras I would say definitely have that lock the focus bit and the yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, exposure adjustment oh fantastic I'll have to um, I have to go and do some photography just to make sure that it works um, yeah. now Last week when we spoke to Karen of Retail Feed, um, the topic came up of, you know, how, how you actually work in this, um, in this time of, you know, working from home and social isolation and social distancing. Um, how do you think people can use photography in this era, like in, in this kind of situation? Do you mean my services or for them in particular? Um, so yeah. I've, um, I'm still working from home. I have a home studio um, with everything set up. I've got all the lighting and everything ready to go. So the way um, I did it with Tony's pies is they um, delivered a lot of pies. <laughs> I had <laughs> pies spread out through my house. There were a lot of pies. Um, so yeah, we just, they delivered, we socially isolated when they delivered and, um, and then I just worked through the process with them via, um, WhatsApp. we had, we used via WhatsApp for web, um, mm -hmm. you can use anything, Zoom, any Skype, any, um, online thing. So, um, it wasn't as if they weren't there for the shoot, they were still present, just not in the traditional way that they would have been present and we were still talking through you know, different ideas for the shots and what they liked and didn't like. So it was really good to be able to do that and not worry about, um, you know, breaking any rules or loopholes or that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it is yeah. a bit restricting, I find, for a services business to not have face-to-face um, -face contact. Um, but it seems like you've been a little busy lately. Is that just with um, people wanting to change up like existing customers wanting to change up their photography for a different use? Um, so, yeah, mainly that. So um, Tony's was a new customer, but definitely for the same reason, wanting to change up what they were doing to a new model. Um, mm -hmm. Oasis um, in Murrumbina and Fairfield is another client. Um, they've also had to pivot um, and they're doing now, well, they're moving everything online, basically, all their online shopping. So we did an e-commerce shoot for them a 
basically, which is just white product, a product on white background, um, as well as all their now online dinner offerings where they deliver meals all over Melbourne because they're not hot meals. You, you heat them when you receive them. So we did a shoot for that. And that's something that they want to do ongoing because they'll constantly be launching new meals. So we'll be doing a const, uh, you know, regular shoot with them as well. Um, there, I have other clients that aren't necessarily food clients, but that have also been really busy. Um, one of them is a, pu a publisher. Well, they do all the arts and crafts stuff and yeah. their products have been flying off the shelves <laughs> basically. Um, and they're coming up with all new ideas for different craft projects. So I've been photographing like the little elements and then styled bits. So friendship bracelets, for instance, or rock painting, so um, even those kinds of businesses have been pivoting and, and going more online and yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So have you, um, do you expect to get more of that work? Is, is there any other kind of people that have been booming that you think might take advantage of photography? And is it only those that are booming that can take, you know, that should be looking at photography as a way to get their product um, noticed. I think um, I think this would be the ideal time if you're not booming to really take a look at what what works for you and when when you were when you were doing well and finding another model. And we're finding increasingly that the model is going online. People are at home; they're bored. Um, they they want to be doing online shopping and if your presence isn't visible and isn't appealing then you're going to get lost because there's so much out there um and so i think it's really important to get your photography right um and i suppose a lot of the inquiries that i've been receiving lately have said oh well you know we don't really have the budget and i understand i'm a small business as well so i'm always willing to work with them in terms of what their budget might be and not necessarily lower my prices but offer payment plans so that it's spread out over a few months and then they can still get what they need but not have to outlay a huge amount all at yeah. once yes. um, so yes. i'm finding yes. that that's really been helpful to people as well um, fantastic good well i think we might wrap it up there lee if that's okay with you you've given us a lot of information to think about and i think um in, in this uh, changed way of working. I think there's a lot of things that um, we you can offer to people who are either, as we said, booming or not booming. Either you have time to fix things that you haven't quite done properly before, or you don't have time and you just need to get more of your um, presence known. Thank you very much for um, giving us your expertise. My pleasure, thank you for having me. All right, so we'll see you um, next week. I think we've got, uh, well, hopefully we've got a website developer talking to us and the week after we have um, a talk on, on new business planning and, and finding the right ideas. So stay tuned. We'll try and bring you some more without the technical glitches next time and um, we'll talk soon. See you. So I've just finished.